Uh, so what I'm, uh, I'll do today is, uh, how many of you have used Akashua before? I'm just trying to use it. <laughs> then you can for, take the last, for the last month. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do is uh, just go over some of the uh, terminology of what, uh, what it is about. Um, obviously, Joy's on the line too. Um, and uh, we'll just go over some hands-on, or we'll show uh, how how your uh, data is protected, volumes, your servers, and some application uh, integration like with SharePoint, how you can retrieve data from your SQL, uh, SQL database. Uh, uh, basically, uh, AppAssure, the, the, the two main parts, uh, so in general, I'm just gonna, I don't have fancy sli slides or anything, I'm just gonna use whiteboard, so please, please, please uh, start with that. So you see what Apposure is, is... Uh, Can everybody see with the board that way? So the way this yeah, works, we can get rid this that that Is that better? Good? Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Okay. So what you have is uh, your NAS, SAN, or cloud, and even local storage. And there's an object file system on top of it. And then you have the Apache Volume Manager. I'm just going to call it ATVM. And then you have all the services that pretty much Apache provides, like uh, you know backup, uh, recovery. Uh, this kind of you could say that all of the services Apache provides large services, right? There's replication. For those of you who don't know, it's uh, it provides a disaster recovery solution as well. So you can replicate. Uh, your uh, app, uh, data that you're protecting to a different server or the WAN and there's a lot of disaster recovery services too. So it, this kind of, you know, like a stack where you could see that uh, this is your storage uh, and we'll talk about what how the storage plays in. Uh, the next thing is the two things basically there's Apposure core server, I'll tell you what core is, and then there is the server you're protecting, I'd say just the agent server, uh, agent, this agent. So what, so what the Agent does is basically it's a agent is a you install the agent driver. Basically, it's a driver that sits in between the Windows kernel and the file system, and all it does is tracks keeps a, a track of the changed blocks. Uh, all it's doing is and sends it to the core server that it manages the storage. It could be like NAS, SAN, or cloud storage that it, it stores data as, uh, and they're called recovery points. And the, the recovery points are a point in time of copy, so they're incremental forever. So um, all it does is it, it just sends in, based on how you've uh, uh, configured your snapshots, I call it snapshots incrementals in the interchangeably because both are same pretty much in this case. Because what it does is, all the agent does is it sends changed blocks <coughs> to the core server and the, and, uh, and, the, and the storage that it's writing to could be a NAS, SAN, or cloud storage. And today to make it a demo a little more interesting, what I'm doing is actually the NAS storage is a DR. For those of you who know, um, uh, DR4000, the dedupe of lines, back of lines, that it's writing to, uh, is storing as a, that's what I'm using as a NAS target. Um, uh, so, and what, what more services Apache provides is basically in the areas of VM recovery. You can restore a physical image to a physical server, you can restore a physical image to a virtual server, or a virtual server to, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, 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 uh, it's universal in its approach that you could uh, uh, protect a physical server and a virtual server as well. There's no differentiation in this case. Uh, you can actually restore data. I mean, I've used a bunch of DMAs, I've, you know, I, like I said, I've, but you can actually restore data without actually restoring data. And I'll, and I'll show you how we can do that. The recovery points, the way it does is recovery points, you can create a virtual disk of your recovery points and it's online on the network. And as storage admins, I'm sure you, you guys have an idea how hard it is to actually figure out where your actual image is if you want to restore a full volume. For example, if your full volume fails, and you have a bunch of incrementals, you have to actually figure out uh, what volumes, what incrementals you have to restore to actually get your data back. I'm sure it's, it's a piece of cake. You just go to your latest snapshot, you say restore your volume, and it just figures out what it needs to retrieve based on the latest snapshot to recover the entire volume. I'll, we'll show you that as well. Uh, Another neat thing is the application integration. Uh, for a lot of DMAs, you need to install an application agent on the application server you're protecting. Uh, and then, you know, there's a lot of configuration and, you know, that, that actually got to connect to the database, for example, SQL database. I'm pretty sure actually you don't have to do that. Once you actually start protecting your volumes, it automatically detects 
that you're actually, there's a SQL uh, database, for example. In this case, it was a SharePoint server. It detects that you're actually protecting the SharePoint server, and you could just actually randomly restore backup, uh, not restore, actually restore and backup uh, your SQL objects in this case. So there's no need for installing additional agents on the uh, SharePoint server or the Exchange server, uh, uh, whatever servers you protect. So are you also doing log maintenance? Sorry? So are you also doing log maintenance? Lo yes, we do. So as, as soon as it detects that you're protecting a SQL server, it actually gives you the ability to truncate, you know, uh, track the logs. So you can, that's, uh, that's all just part of the uh, core. Yeah, but, core. yeah that, that's really the, the critical thing for application support. Absolutely. Because backup doesn't just, doesn't just do backup, it tells the application it got backed up. That's right. Uh, so it's, uh, like I said, it's pretty, it lightweight. I mean, like, as soon as you hear the word agent, I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, oh, you know, agent, then it's, you know, it's pretty heavyweight. Actually, it takes a lot of less resources compared to a lot of agents out there. It's pretty lightweight. Like I said, it's just a filter driver. All it does is just change, uh, send change blocks to the core server. The bulk of the I/O, the you know, the main, uh, the bulky server in this case is actually the core server because that actually is doing the I/O to your, you know, to your recovery clients that are being uh, presented here. Any questions so far? Is it does it make sense? Uh, so we will. You need to get this thing on. So you, you, on. If you're saying it's it's snapshotting, is it also integrated with the snapshot technologies? <coughs> yes. The storage where it is on. It uses VSS snapshots. No, and, and then the storage integrations. Oh, uh, no. no. Right. Yes. Is that a no? Not yet, or just a no? So at this point, like I think Mike kind of mentioned, I think it's uh, I think it's still the whole integration is kind of we're trying to figure out how the snapshotting uh, 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 would be integrated with the backup target. In this case, I'm. Let me understand the question. It, it, will we offload snapshots to the underlying store yes. repository? Um, don't know the answer. Uh, so Equalogic supports VSS and application pieces and snapshots. Uh, Compellent has more and more of that. So how we kind of deconflict all that is to be determined right now. Yeah, and it all gets more complicated when you virtualize the servers and can't do a volume snapshot of a server because there's 20 in that volume. In 40 I seconds, Equalogic yeah. had that sorted with their snap, their, their manager. Their virtual manager, their hit kit. Yeah, I So, are you okay in presenting what? It, yeah, we just yeah, waiting for. Yeah, twenty seconds, and it should be coming back a lot. <laughs> so, hold tight for a second. Sorry, guys. Did I answer the question? Hmm? Is best we do. So you mentioned doing the backup to the DR4000 and the DR4000 has its replication technologies, <laughs> but the Aperture has its replication technologies too. Right. How are you going to do the replication through the application or through the storage if you're going to a second site? So obviously it doesn't make sense to replicate on the both sides. but. Uh, it has to be so one. If, if I have two engines being capable of replicating to the other side, are you going to do it on the application level? Yes. Because you. You turn off because the of the database. Replication because Correct. it needs to maintain its own uh, metadata mapping and everything else for, uh -huh. for, for DR purposes. The now, we're talking about that might be an offload where if it can control DR4000 replication, then, then it can offload that from the, from the application server. The reason why I'm asking is the. The Aperture has some compression technology in it. It does, yeah. The DR4000 has some deduplication technology in it. Yeah. So if you do the replication over the DR4000, you might need a smaller bandwidth than if you do it on the application. Yeah, so, so both, actually both have dedupe and compression. And uh, Aperture's dedupe and compression is actually pretty efficient. We may be shortly recommending to our customers that, you know what, if you're using Aperture, uh, in a in a normal use case with a single core aperture core server, we do not recommend using DR4000. 
because the incremental savings might only be 15, 20 percent. That's probably not worth the extra so, cost. So actually, that's a good point because so VR it can detect dupes across cores. So Aperture dedupe uh, regression is, it, it can only, depending on how many agents you're protecting, it can only dedupe across data across those agents. When before the core writes, you know, it writes data to the target. So if you have many core servers backing up to a single DR4000, we get the benefits of global dedupe across all of those uh, logical volumes. But, um, uh, it, it, you know, so in the more complex use case, the DR4000 sure. still makes sense. But even there, the aperture backup host still needs to manage its own replication. Um, so now the question about algorithms, well, who's got the better algorithm? Can I eke out some more savings either for transport or for, say, for storage? Yeah, we're going to work through that. The Ocarina team might actually be plugging their algorithms back into Aperture. Uh, it remains to be seen. I, I can answer any questions so far. Or Basically, what I was going to show, like I said, is uh, I, I like I deleted those faults from the agent. I was going to go to the core and just say, you know, we cover all the faults. So it just... It builds up, it knows the list of uh, snapshots, it has to catalog and actually build the whole file list uh, at the latest at that particular time when the snapshot was taken, so we would retrieve all the files. And the next step I, uh, I was going to show was that uh, the SharePoint, we had SharePoint server running, we actually backed up the SharePoint data and we will have restored uh, uh, SharePoint files from the core itself using, the, uh, using, a, <coughs> using a thin application that uh, Aperture provides. Um, any other questions on that front while we'll see if the network comes up and so effectively you stitch together a synthetic full from all the snapshot yes. incrementals that you took. Yes. And the and the snapshot incrementals are all based on change block tracking that's the right. agent that's sitting in the SharePoint uh, or yes. SQL server? Yes, that's correct. And also there is a roll-up, I didn't talk about this, there's so much to talk about, like we didn't touch upon a lot of the replication also considering the time constraints, but you can actually roll up your snapshots too, there's a roll-up schedule. So do you want your snapshots to go every day, if you have an aggressive snapshot schedule, it, it could be as granular as up to five minutes. So you, you can end up with hundreds of snapshots. So you can have a roll-up schedule that create that rolls off your, it, it, it creates a synthetic image of all your snapshots. Up and to deletes, that point. Up yeah. to that point, yeah. and deletes all your snapshots. So it's easy to manage. Um, and that's all being done by the Aperture Volume Manager, effectively? Correct. Yes. And, and, so, and so replication to, is to another core server? Is that how it works? That's correct. And you can replicate uh, the recovery points from one core to another core. So you could, you could have this core over LAN or, I mean, actually, you could, you could have a LAN. And uh, you'd have another core, which is a target. And actually, the way it works is uh, it only uh, sends in, it optimizes data over the LAN. So it applies this global, if you enable Aperture uh, optimization, it uses, it optimizes the bandwidth as well. And so before is, is it agent to agent or core to core? Core to core. Core to core. core, to core. So you can have multiple agents replicated yeah. by using single core. Yeah. And, uh, and it, it checks. Uh, Based on the replication schedule, it checks if the metadata has changed or the files blocks have changed and it replicates a card. Do you have to have so you have to have a core local to the agents then? Core it, not necessarily, as long as the agents the can answer be, is, uh, yes, you want one there. You don't have to need it. But from a local recovery perspective, it is uh, infinitely better to have a core local. Yeah. Okay. And otherwise you would be backing up over the way. Yeah. So well, you you've been that. backing up changes only, right? We're, we're only backing up the changes, that is correct. But even still, the yeah, yeah. core is, um, the, the communication from one uh, agent to a core is not compressed or deduplicated. Oh, okay. Right? The communication between a core and another core is. Right. So there is a dramatic reduction in WAN globalization when you're going core to core. So there's no resources at the agent working on the compression. That is correct. Only it's, only, deliberately. it's only your backup server reason. doing the resource, the, the, the work. Right. The reason we do it this way is very simple. We do not want to impact this box. Right. So every every machine that we back up, we see that average of one two percent CPU hit, which means we're not interrupting production. Is that inline or or scheduled? 
the compression and uh, everything, yeah. everything is done compression is all done in line. In line, okay. 